Boy, it's even her fat, Mike. <laughs> and the fat one, big old belly on Good it. Another nice looking fish. They're sure hard to hold on to. Yeah, I'll just get you to pop that jig out. You really drove it in there, didn't the you? Hair out of the way. It feels nice to catch a fish on something you made with your own hands, doesn't it? It makes a little big difference. Yeah, yeah. it's really the enjoyment. Boy, have they got a hard nose. Really, really hard. Now, another thing we're doing is we're we're all using a different color and size of jig, just trying to see if we can come up with a pattern, that one that works a little better than the other. I've got a black and white one on, and TJ, what you had a green one on. Green and black, yeah. I'm going to get him back in the water. Looks like maybe the pink and green and white is maybe the answer. All right, there he goes. Now, do you guide anywhere else other than on Kootenai Lake? Kootenai Lake, Plumlee River. We do a few small lakes, little family fun charters all throughout the summer. You get a lot of tourists come through town that uh, just for the fishing, or is there lots of other things for families to do? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of other things to do. There's uh, the hot springs around, there's mountain climbing, fishing, of course, lots of fishing, small lakes, rivers, streams. There's one. Oh, better get Looks like a good one. <laughs> Let me get out of your way here. I think I might be over top of you. But it's just not trophy fishing. There's a lot of uh, family oriented fishing where you can bring the kids and they're not big fish but they'll go a pound to five pounds from the Rocky Mountain whitefish to kokanee to the rainbow. Your winter fishing here is quite good as well? Yeah, our winter fishing is by far the best. It's a real nice one, TJ. Yeah. It's one of those alternate species you were talking about. Yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> that's a big old squawfish, isn't it? That is a big squawfish. Holy man, that's, that's chunky. Biggest squawfish I've ever caught. Uh, that's a neat thing though, like you were telling us, you know, we're out fishing for boat char right now, but if that happens to slow down, you can always go catch something in this lake. Yeah, you can go for kokanee, you can go for the Rocky Mountain. Yeah, I'll get you to pop that out of his mouth. You are also mentioning like you have a, a squawfish derby? Yes, we do. Every fall, last year we had it on the September long weekend, we throw a squawfish derby for the kids. Uh, we find the derbies that are around, it's always for the adults, and, and we threw one last year for the kids, it was our first annual, and it went over really well. Over 500 squaws were taken out of the west arm here, and then it helps to get rid of get rid of the species like this because there is a lot of them in here they lay a lot of eggs and tell the do. size of the belly on this one too they do a lot of eating yeah and they're just coming in their spawn actually yeah well this yeah. is this is a big squat fish there's no doubt about that and they do put up one heck of a fight on light tackle so yeah. i'm just going to release this one but so what what damage uh, would a squat fish do to your fishery like uh they prey on your your small fish uh the kokanee Rainbow. I'm sure they take a lot of the whitefish fingerlings too. And I know they're predators for the eggs when, mm -hmm. when the spawn's going on too. So, And there are lots of them in here. And as the water warms now coming into June, our dolly fishing will end here and the squawfish just take over. So <laughs> now they can have a lot of fun. They can have a lot of fun, you betcha. Now we're fishing these dollies quite shallow water. Uh, do you fish them deep as well? Uh, yeah, we do. We'll go into downrigging. Uh, downrigging down to depths about 150 feet. Out in the main, just down a little lower here, we've downrigged them down to about 120 feet. Uh, there's about another three or four bars for the type of fishing that we're doing here that we can also try down below. But the majority down below is taken on downrigger fishing. Well, this is really nice because a lot of times you can see the bottom, you can watch them chasing, chasing the jigs. and. Uh, Anytime you can see the fish strike, that just makes it that much more exciting. That's for sure. It sure does. Why don't we give one of those other spots a try? Do that. All right. There's one. Is that a bad fish? <clears throat> oh, he's putting up a good, good pull. We just come over the top of that little bar again. Mike, is the fishing this good all, all year round here for, for these fish? Yeah, the fishery starts uh, around November. As soon as we start getting the cold weather and it goes all the way through the winter and it holds good until about the beginning of June. 
As of June 1st, so there's a, it's a fly only in here, and this would be classified as a weighted fly, but we have to change it to a single hook. That's the only, the only thing. So it's pretty good all through the winter as well? Oh, you betcha. We do a lot of fish in the teens in the winter time. Now you fish mostly for them on downriggers and things? No, nope, that's where you too. In the summer though? Yeah, you can. Yeah. You betcha. It's not ready to come oh, in yet. Oh. Boy, they're chunky. They are. Can you charge it quite a bit for these, Mike? Oh, uh, it's starting to get more and more popular. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the Girards that are the most popular. And, yeah. Uh, the dollies coming on now. Well, they're a lot of fun to catch, and like we're using pretty light gear here, really. And they should give a good account of themselves. Man, they're fat and slippery. <laughs> That's a nice fish too, Jay. Would you take a picture of that for yeah. me? Alrighty. Alright. Get the jig out of there. Sure. So Lots did... of nice colors on them. I want to get a couple of pictures. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. When did you sneak that um, green and pink jig on me? Well, I was watching Mike catching all the fish. Dug into his tackle box. <laughs> Didn't take very long. There. Earlier in the morning and it's kind of slacked off and come out we're going to try for some kokanee. We'll probably go back and try the dollies a little bit later on. Oh, there's one. You got one? Yeah. Well that didn't take long. <laughs> yeah. Mike, you guys run some family fun charters out here too, don't you, for kokanee and whitefish? And... Yes we do. Oh, blast them right at the boat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I might have one on here. Something hit it or else I'm dragging bottom. Yeah we do, TJ. It's, uh, we run two hours, four hours, whatever the people prefer. Mom and dad and the kids. Just fun stuff, getting out here and catching some fish. You can catch a lot of fish, can't you? Yeah, you can. Some days you can excited. catch 30, 40 fish. And it's a guaranteed trip, too. Especially for the kids, we'll guarantee them that they're going to get into something. And the kids don't care what they catch. As long as the fish are biting, they're happy. That's right. Be anything from Rocky Mountain to the Kokanee, and we do even pick up some nice rainbow. I can see my gang go yeah, up. Yeah, there's a little fish on oh, there. Oh, yeah, you got a little guy on there. Yeah, a little coke. A little coke. These are the chicken of the sea on this lake. There's a lot of people out here fishing these, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them you don't get a lot of great bite out of. But they are, like I say, they're the eaters. There's a little coconut there. They don't get real big, but three, four pounds is a monster, isn't it? Three, four pounds is a monster, yeah. <laughs> but they're fishing. <laughs> well, you're using a yeah. couple of methods here that are it's going to get this one back close. Oh, okay. There he goes. A couple of methods are a little different than uh, a lot of types of fishing that we do. We're using gang troll and uh, it's a small leader with, uh, what do you call this, a hot dog, Mike? It's a kokanee hot dog. It's a, yeah, just a soft rubber glow hook instead of the plastic. Then we got four or five maggots on and uh, two or three ounces of weight. So just trolling this along right near the bottom. TJ's got something a little bit different on. I've just got a flasher on the same basic terminal tackle at the end. It's kind of unique. Kokanee are real plankton and shrimp feeders, but yet you use all this hardware to attract them in. And then finally, it's the little hook that catches their attention and that's what they bite. But they don't seem to bite a hook too well without all this garb on to get their attention first. Let's do that again, Mike. That was great. Again, yeah. <laughs> Mike, we're going to be fishing for Dolly Varden, and uh, you tie up all your own jigs? Yeah, we do, Bob. We uh, use a variety of different weights, right from quarter ounce right up to uh, about a two, two and a half ounce, depending on the current. The higher the current comes down the river, the, the heavier jig we get into. Now, we've got Jerry here, one of your uh, employees, and he's going to show us, go through the motions of how to tie up one of these jigs, and maybe you can just explain while he's doing that what he's doing and... and why he's using the materials and stuff that he is. What we actually tie the fly with, or the jig with, is actual buck tail, uh, dyed in a variety of different colors. We usually tie the, the jig with the lighter color being on the bottom and work our way into the darker color as we go up. Now, is, is that to represent any particular type of bait fish, or why do you choose the colors you do? I mean, I've seen the colors you have are endless, so why do you choose the patterns and colors you do? Uh, it's, a, it's, I guess if you call it a choice, I don't know, it's just something that we've made up and gone from plugs to lures, they all come in a variety of colors, and 
we can probably look at 150 different ones and we stop at about a selected 10. So it's just a matter of trial and error, whatever works best, keep trying something new and uh, exactly. until you find something that's effective. Exactly, yeah. And it, even you can tie these with the polar bear here. It's quite a bit more expensive, but the bucktail is more buoyant, believe it or not, than the actual polar bear hair. Everybody believes that the polar bear hair actually floats and is full of air. Well, it has little air cells in it where uh, white tail itself is very much full of air and it will actually float without any weight. And when, it, when you pull that jig, it, it goes nice and tight and on the release, it puffs up really, really well in the water. So it actually looks like it's alive when it's being pulled through the water properly? Yes. And uh, the light colors are on the bottom more to represent the bait fish with you know, darker colors on top. Yes. Yeah. We have, we're just kind of experimenting with some of our uh, bucktail flies right now that we pull for our rainbow and we're reversing the patterns because I'm starting to believe now that we're building our, our flies and our plugs and lures to look like a fish and I think we've got to start breaking that camouflage pattern and we're just an experiment of that right now but it is working well for us. Like, instead of building a, a, a bucktail jig with white on the belly, black on the top, just for our own sake and fishing purposes, we are reversing and finding that on, on some days it is quite a bit better. Now tying jigs and flies is a pretty big part of your business. Uh, uh, how, many, how many flies and jigs would you tie in a season? Any idea? Yeah, that's a hard question. Uh, it's probably up in the, oh, under 10,000, under the 10,000 area. Well, that's a lot of tying. Yeah, that's a lot of tying. We've got three of us going on it now, so. But they really do simulate the fish in the water. They do look well. Now, this, this jig that uh, Jerry's tying right now, uh, is it going to be just two colors, or... Uh, or three? Just two colors? Two color jig here? Yes. Okay. And do you add anything to the head of the jig? Do you put eyes on or uh, to add any color? Yes, we do. We'll paint a, a yellow eye with a black dot on it. Uh, as of June 1st, we have to fish without the, the eye on it because it goes to fly only in here and we have to go to a single hook. How uh, we're we use on a lot of these we'll use the double double hook on there that you can pop on pop off and change really easy now we go to this style of jig here because it has a single hook on it and we'll, we will use it with the unpainted head like it is there and the single hook it's considered uh, a weighted fly but you can't have more than a single They stand up quite well to an amount of fish too. Unlike the bucktail fly or the polar bear fly, you can hit anywhere from five to twenty fish on them before they do actually come apart. But you, you can't tie them with the small threads that we use to last forever. And a tooth or a nick in it can can destroy them pretty good. But the bucktail bucktail jig stands up fairly well. Where is the finished product? And uh, looks simple enough, but I know it takes a lot of practice to get them down right. No. Oh, that's a solid finish. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Well, that's another. You don't have any idea what you're going to catch here either. No, that's for sure. Oh, there's some weight to this one, whatever it is. Haven't picked up uh, Rainbow on the odd occasion. Well, that's a big fish. That's some weight to her. Yeah. Ooh. yeah that's a big fish. Looks like, a, looks like a dolly, too. You can see the white fins on it. Okay. We're going to have to move for the ferry, unfortunately, here. Okay. I'm just going to pump this in a little bit that way. we got to bump our ferry running back and forth here. we just got to keep out of the way. It's a little bit bigger than we are. That looks like a nice fish, Bob. Yeah, I caught a glimpse of it. It's sure pulling, anyway. Now, having this uh, nine-foot rod helps. I can maneuver the fish around a little bit. And if the fish does decide to take a run this close to the boat, I can probably let it go without distressing the line too much. Oh, 
Never be in a hurry to net a fish. That's where most fish get lost. You want to lead them in head first. Don't try and stick them by the tail or you're going to lose them for sure. I think I see more people stab at fish with a net and knock them right off. Well, it's so easy to get the hook caught up in the net or... It comes the ferry wake, just watch yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth taking your time for. If the fish isn't well hooked, it's probably going to get off anyways. As long as you keep some tension on the line, chances are it's not going to get the hook out of its mouth. Just let him swim right into the net like All that. All right, thank you. Beautiful fish, Bob. Nice fish. Mike told us they do some of the best fighting in the nets, and I can see why. <laughs> wow. Drop up in the net a little bit. Boy, they're a hard fish to hold on to. That's a big old nail. He's got a big old kite on his jaw there. That's what chewed up here. Really. Boy, they got some teeth on them too, don't they? A lot. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fish. Well, I'm going to try and get this one back in the water right away. Get out of your way here. Give me a good fight. <sighs> Wore out. They sure give it all, don't they? Yeah. Just hold on to him for a second. Give him a minute to revive. Give me a rest. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's a beautiful fish. Those pink spots along the side are so pretty. He's getting ready. He's holding by the tail a little bit. Those white leading edges on those fins. Well, that's what you can see when you're going over that shallow water. And if they're sitting down beside the rocks, you can pick up on those white edges so easy. You can just go ahead to go. We just had an electrical storm come through here. There wasn't a lot of lightning, but there sure was a lot of static in the air. In fact, uh, PJ and Mike both got a shock from their fishing rod. We had to take off the shore and put on some rain gear and get out of the storm. But we just got back out here and Mike's hooked onto a fish. It's a really good point. If you're out fishing with graphite rods, which we are, because you need to feel them, if any static gets in the air, you can sure get a nasty shock from them. These rods were just zapping in the air. It was pretty wild. Little one. Little one. Yeah. He stripped up a fight, didn't he? Yeah. Thing about these. Now, it's one thing here, like these Dolly Martins, not a lot of people come out here and actually fish for them, do they? Not this style of fishing, no. Most people out here, they'll come and troll in the main lake for them. It's the big dried rainbows that attract most of the people? Yeah. Tell you what, these are a lot of fun. Well, Bob, I think we're kind of coming to the end of the day here. Lights going on us. Maybe we'll get a few more casts in. We should like to thank you, Mike. It's probably one of the most fun experiences I've had. More than welcome. It's been great. Thank you. Thanks for coming out with us. Make sure you join us next time on Gone Fishing. While taping Gone Fishing with Bob and TJ, cast and crew stayed at the Woodbury Resort in Caslow, British Columbia.